In the previous lectures, we have been talking about how to find the shortest path in a directed acyclic graph and so on. In this lecture, I would like to talk a bit about the relationship between dynamic programming and directed acyclic graphs. If you know nothing about dynamic programming, then feel free to skip this lecture. By the way, I have a distinct course on dynamic programming, recursion and backtracking algorithms. So if you are interested in these topics, then feel free to check out that course. Anyways, so in this lecture, we are going to talk about what is the relationship between dynamic programming and directed acyclic graphs. So first of all, let's talk a bit about dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is both an optimization technique and a computer programming method introduced by Richard Bellman back in 1953. The main idea is that we can break down complicated problems into smaller and smaller subproblems in a recursive manner. Then of course we can find the solutions for these subproblems and finally we can combine the sub results in order to find the final solution for the original problem. So for example if we consider Fibonacci numbers this is exactly what's happening. We know that there is a relationship so if we want to find the nth Fibonacci number, then we have to calculate the n minus 1 Fibonacci number plus the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. And of course, as you may guess, these problems are not independent of each other, which means that there are overlapping subproblems. If we want to calculate the Fibonacci number n minus 2, then of course we have to calculate Fibonacci number n minus 3 and Fibonacci number n minus 4. And if we consider the colors, you can see that we keep calculating the same problem over and over again. So we can come to the conclusion that we can use dynamic programming if the problem has a so-called optimal substructure. So what does it mean? That if an optimal solution can be constructed from optimal subsolutions for the subproblems. And of course the Bellman equation is going to define the relationship between the sub results and the final result. Anyways, I don't want to talk a lot about dynamic programming. What's crucial that we can use dynamic programming if there are overlapping subproblems. So if we consider calculating the nth Fibonacci number, then if we use the naive approach with recursion, then we are going to calculate the same subproblems over and over again. And with the help of dynamic programming, we are going to eliminate these multiple operations and we are going to calculate the same subproblems only once. And this is why dynamic programming is going to be way faster than the naive approach. Okay, and there is an interesting relationship between dynamic programming related problems and directed acyclic graphs. So most of the dynamic programming related problems can be transformed into a given graph. And what's extremely crucial that this graph is a directed acyclic graph. So we just have to do a shortest path or a longest path sometimes on that given graph in order to find the solution for the original problem. So we can transform most of the dynamic programming related problems into directed acyclic graph and we just have to use the approaches we have considered in the previous lectures. So for example, an interesting problem is the longest increasing subsequence problem. This is a typical problem that can be solved with dynamic programming. So if we have an A array with integers 6, 2, 8, 4, 5 and 7, just for demonstration purposes, of course there may be any integers we like. Okay, and the problem is that we want to find the longest increasing subsequence. What does it mean? In this example, the longest increasing subsequence is 2, 4, 5 and 7. Because of course we have to make sure that in the longest increasing subsequence, the actual item is always smaller than the previous items. So for example, if we have 6, 2, it is not going to be a valid solution because 6 is greater than 2. 2, 4, 5 and 7 is the longest increasing subsequence because 2 is smaller than 4, 4 is smaller than 5, 5 is smaller than 7. So this is the problem we would like to solve and we can create a directed acyclic graph out of these values. What do we have to do? We are going to have as many vertices or nodes in the graph as the number of integers in the one dimensional array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and there is a directed edge from 
from node i to node j if the ith item is smaller than the jth item. Okay, so if we have the integers like this, then we can construct a directed acyclic graph and this is going to be the graph itself. We have an empty root node and as you can see, we have to consider the items 6, 2, 4 and 5. You may pose the question why? Because there is a directed edge from node i to node j if a i is smaller than a j. So for example, 6 is smaller than 7 or 6 is smaller than 8 so 6 is going to be an item in the first layer then we have 2 you may pose the question why because 2 is smaller than 8 4 5 and 7 then we have 4 and 5 you may pose the question why because 4 is smaller than 5 and 7 we have 5 because 5 is smaller than 7 so this is how we can construct the directed acyclic graph and by the way sorry for that i made a mistake because here as far as 2 is concerned, of course 2 is smaller than 8, 4, 5 and 7. So as far as the children of 2 is concerned, we should have 8 as well. So 8, 4, 5 and 7. So as you can see, every single node, so every single value in the directed acyclic graph will have as many children as the number of items in the one dimensional array that has larger values than the actual node. So here, for example, integer 6 has two children, 8 and 7, because if we consider this one dimensional array, then 6 is smaller than 8 and 6 is smaller than 7. If we consider all the other values, 6 is larger than 2, 6 is larger than 4, 6 is larger than 5. So this is why a given node will have children if that given value is smaller than those values. So this is how we can construct the directed acyclic graph. And what do we have to do? We have to find the longest path in this directed acyclic graph. We can do it with the help of topological ordering in linear running time complexity. And the result will be 2, 4, 5, and 7. And of course, this is the result, 2, 4, 5, and 7. So we can solve this problem with recursion. We can come to the conclusion that if we use recursion, then there's overlapping subproblems. So we keep calculating the same subproblems over and over again. So dynamic programming is a bit better approach because with the help of dynamic programming, we are going to calculate a single sub result only once. And then we can come to the conclusion that we can transform dynamic programming related problems into directed acyclic graphs and we can use the approaches we have considered as far as the shortest path or the longest path approaches are concerned. And for example, we can find the solution for the longest increasing subsequence problem with the help of a longest path algorithm. Okay, so this is the relationship between dynamic programming approaches and directed acyclic graphs. Thanks for watching.